Let's bring in Tuna Amobi, equity analyst at CFRA Research. Uh, Tuna, th this is clearly a, a big miss on that guy, particularly the paid net ads. What's your take and, and the share price reaction as well? Um, yeah, good afternoon, Well, I, th I think it certainly calls into you know, question the ability of Netflix to sustain the type of uh, uh, growth that we've seen over the last uh, you know, decade. Um, and also, the, coming on the heels of this price increase, one has to wonder whether um, finally, um, we're beginning to see some type of, um, you know, demand elasticity that's making, um, you know, some of the subscribers to pull back. That being said, um, there's definitely some encouraging aspects of, of the report. Um, you know, internationally, we've seen uh, Latin America again uh, coming back after the weakness in the prior quarter. Um, you know, Asia Pacific, um, I think the runway there still seems to be pretty uh, long, despite um, you know the results this quarter that were maybe a tad below expectation. But all in all, I think um, the, the long-term uh, secular uh, growth story for Netflix uh, remains intact. Uh, one has to wait and see what some of the other streaming platforms report to see whether there is any general uh, trends to parse from this uh, uh, this overall trends. But uh, all in all. Um, the key question is to what extent they're going to be able to sustain the, uh, the financial profile that they've communicated to the street, which is basically acceleration of uh, uh, free cash flow uh, starting this year, uh, which uh, perhaps they'll pay more attention to uh, shareholder return initiatives, uh, whether it's uh, you know, buyback or potentially other uses of cash. So on your point about competition, I just want to read, and Ed, maybe you can weigh in here, from the shareholder letter, you know, they always have a competition section, but this time they're admitting something interesting. So Netflix says competition has only intensified over the last 24 months as entertainment companies around the world develop their own streaming offerings. While this added competition may be affecting our marginal growth some, we continue to grow in every country and region in which these new streaming alternatives have launched. Sort of an acknowledgement there that it is impacting and halting a little bit of their growth, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think this is for the first Ed? time they're, you know, they're, they're yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Um, yep, yeah, go I, for I it. feel like for the first time, Netflix, yeah, Netflix is admitting in pretty plain language, you know, competition, meaning other streamers specifically, really matters. It, it, it's cutting into their ability to grow the market, especially overseas. They did talk about how Latin America was softer because of what they thought was a COVID overhang on, on the, the economics of the region. It's still sort of the cheapest sort of, you know, in terms of ARPU, you know, how much revenue per user they get in that region. And they're thinking that maybe COVID is affecting the economy there in a way that's sort of preventing enough uptake. Again, it's, it's going to come down to the fact that there's so many more choices uh, around the world, not just in the U.S. U.S. is the most saturated, yes. But, you know, HBO Max and Paramount and Peacock as well, like they're owning more of the content, which means they can now deliver it around the world since they'll have ownership over it. Nowhere near as much as Netflix, but that's the real worry for Netflix, right? That, oh, wow, it's like we, we had this great head start overseas. Now all the studios that produce this stuff, they're holding on to them and playing the same game we are. So that's, I think, because it's, it's an international company. That's where the growth is really coming for for them. Uh, so this is interesting. It's, it's very noteworthy that they said that out loud. Mike, uh, the stock's back down to, what, 450 bucks. Uh, the EPS is a beat. Has yeah. it grown into its valuation in, in recent years? No. Um, I mean, it's always been, you know, it, it, the good news is it's probably at the lowest cash flow multiple enterprise value to cash flow uh, that it's been in the streaming era, in the streaming original content era, which is the last decade for Netflix. The bad news is it's above 30 times. So it's never really been 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 uh, valued based much on uh, on today's earnings power. I think one of the issues with the guide on subscriber growth is that sometimes when Netflix gives a disappointing guide, it's because they kind of front loaded some more and had better sub growth in the past quarter. That wasn't the case this time. Uh, a lot of folks, when they raised prices in U.S. and Canada last week, uh, that that pop in the stock went away by this morning. Uh, maybe I think they were kind of inferring that maybe that meant tough things for the subscriber numbers. So the, 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 the stock typically finds its footing. It kind of trades on franchise value. It's $200 billion is $200 billion plus dollars in market cap kind of what it should be if it's going to be the core of what television you know, is becoming? I don't know. That's the argument. It's not really about financially how it's performing today.